Here we are, 1.8 miles from home and we're in the countryside. And uh, the road traffic's been quite light for uh, about 2 o'clock, 2.16. And nobody's trying to kill me. Zero point seven miles turn left on Coniston Lane. Well, someone's out for a bit of exercise. Ah, you can see the fields to my to the left and right of me are full of wheat. Stuff that goes into making your bread and lager. Hi there. Now I haven't, I haven't been out cycling much this year at all due to uh, weather and time constraints. So this will be one of my first few rides out this year and uh, <laughs> it's, it's starting to rain a little bit. There's a few spots of rain coming down. It's not bad. It's quite refreshing. Oh look. I don't know what that was, a goldfinch maybe. 200 feet turn left on Coniston Lane. There's lots of purple campion on the hedgerow to my left. Lots of thistles in seed. Average speed 8.3. Average power 161. Heart rate 115.
someone's uh, picking the brambles. Yeah, that'll be the blackberries. Zero point one miles turn. On the hedgerows, they're very tasty. They are. Of course, when you're out walking, they do make a tasty treat. Turn right on Dancing Lane. Nice red roses there. Zero point four miles per left on Skirlow Road. Oh, well, the navigation seems to be working quite <laughs> loudly on my uh, on my cycle computer. I've got a different rucksack on to I, uh, the one I normally have. This one is more of a vest. It's got pockets at the front. And uh, so I'll put my phone in there. So that's probably why it's a bit louder on the camera than normal. Now what they've got in this field? Oh, they've got weeds in this field again, by the looks of it. They must have had a crop rotation because I think last year it would have been oil seed rope. Yeah, both sides were oil seed rope. Now it's corn, uh, wheat. It looks like wheat anyway. Well, that was a bit of an incline, that one. We don't mind a little incline. Now I've got a headwind. Well, I'm going this direction, so of course that means by the time it's, I come turn round, the wind will change direction and I'll have a headwind again. There's lots of blackbirds about. Feet turn left on Skirlow Road. 0.6 miles turn left on Swine Road. Try and keep my talking to a to a point where I, when I where I edit, oh, I can. Uh, Use of use my uh, vocals. Average speed uh. point nine. Average power one sixty two. Heart rate one twenty three. I thought the dog smelled bad. Well, this is uh, quite repugnant. I think someone's been mock spreading. Uh, you know, nature is a wonderful thing, really. 
we have these plants that grow in the ground the animals eat the plants they take the goodness from the plant itself and whatever's left goes back onto the ground and is used as fertilizer for the plants to feed the animals it's a circle of life as they say well it's absolutely glorious out here i'm glad i came out now sitting there in my house thinking shall i go shall i not go it looks like it's going to rain is it going to be too windy uh, you just have to get out don't you 0.1 miles turn left on swine road Now this obviously was a, a very big uh, pig farming community at this point one in this region because everything's called swine. 200 feet turn left on Swine Road. And uh, if we're sat there, if you said, let's turn left onto Swine Road. Here we go. Now, the reason that I come this way is because this is a national cycle byway and it's a route deemed safe for cyclists and what we are uh, as we all know cyclists are second on the list from pedestrians this is what a lot of people don't get you see is uh, the supporting structure on a human is wrapped in soft bacon and fat and uh, a car driver has a supporting structure on the outside to keep the bacon and fat safe on the inside there we go another little pedestrian On your left! Yeah, give them a little bit of a warning so it's more of a shock as I go uh, tearing past them at a staggering 12.8 miles an hour! I'm running at uh, way under 200 watts now if I kept that up for an hour I could run nothing <laughs> average speed 9.5 I think what I'd have to do is I'd have to, if I wanted to run a, 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 uh, an electric fire for an hour, I'd have to cycle for five hours to get one hour's worth of heating. It's not very economic, is it? These uh, professional cyclists, they're running at over 250 watts, maybe getting up to 300 watts. Coming up to my five mile marker. And it will tell me how good I am. 
how good I was. There we go. 3101. Now normally 26. But I've obviously dropped a bit of fitness being being at work all those months. It's a bit of a steep climb here. Being in two dimensions you probably can't tell on the camera. It's more wheat. Been uh, harvested already. Well, there's a new uh, Jeremy Clarkson farm coming out soon, I do believe, on uh, Amazon Prime. The last one was very good. There's a rope, that's, that feel there, there's lots of rope on my left. You can't see it now, there was just a hole in the hedge for the tractor to go. Yes, yeah, old Jeremy Clarkson and his production team, uh, I think it might even be uh, Richard Hammond uh, has a, a production team making videos so I don't know if it's him, anything to do with him or not, I don't know but anyway, the production team is very good they always come out with excellent pictures the image quality is superb the drone footage is superb and of course Clarkson gives us great content Benningholm Hall. We've got some uh, freedom cattle out there, tan coloured cows. Oh, a nice, nice view there that way. One of the uh, one of the good things about coming out for a bike ride is that it helps to clear your mind. I certainly am under a, a lot less stress now that I'm working, being unemployed is not the best thing. On your left. Thank you. Hello. Now, see, yeah, both those pedestrians 
were following the wolves. And they were walking in the direction that the traffic is heading towards them, so they can see the cars coming. Whereas they were on my side walking, they wouldn't be able to see the cars coming towards them. Ah. Thank you. Now that's what you call allowing the traffic to flow. Plenty of room for the first car to come by and by the time I got to the passing point the second car was going by. Nobody was held up and the traffic flowed. Oh yeah. Wow, oh, it's a Brompton. Don't really call them proper bikes, but never mind. Let's see what this guy's gonna do. Are you gonna slow down? Thank you. All they got to do is just slow down a little bit. That corner of the road needs looking at, doesn't it? Right. Now there's several passing points along this way. This is the first one. And I do believe there's another one up there. Yeah, it's on this corner. People have moved over to the gravel to allow other vehicles pass. Well, there's some. That was probably rapeseed in there. Average uh, passing point. Average power 169. No. Rate 124. Now, now, the road I'm on is 60, and the road I'm about to go on is 30. Would you really travel at 60 down that road? I don't think so. But kids see the 60 sign and they just go for it. Well, national speed limit.
There we go, well, average is now up to 10. Um, current speed is 13. Fifteen, sixteen miles an hour. Nice grey mare in that field. Oh, I'm going to take a painkiller when I get there. A bit of pain at the moment. Yes, yeah, so my pain is not where you think it is. It's actually in my wrist. Probably shop by looks of it. Guess they might open during a school holiday. Which is, we're in now. We're Zero in a school holiday now. Turn right on A165. Turn I'll be doing a blog when I get to the uh, the churchyard at Longriston. But in case I forget, you know me, uh, get sidetracked. Yeah, I'll mention now that I've lost another 1.3 kilos. So I'm now down to 96. So that's good. Another four weeks on board the ship and I've lost 1.3 kilos in weight. Yeah, the reason why is because I I've taken control now of how much they give me. And if they give me too much, I don't eat it, I'll put it back. I know it's wasteful but I do ask them to give me smaller portions. I mean, they're not bad guys. I just say, well, oh, that's enough, and they just keep putting more on. Right, let's drop it down for a... Right oh. look at that. That was that car, that red car that pulled out. 130 feet continue to Main Street. Backed out into the street without looking. Could have been a kid on a bike. Zero point four miles turn right on K 
Patrick Lane. Now I'm a little sat now. Can't work it out that I'm going under a subway. Although it is marked on the map. I guess they're saying it's for pedestrians, but it does have a cycle route through the subway. Can I come in? White. Looks like you're going to put houses there. Micro bar, good. Next time I'll still win that one. Won't have a point in the micro micro pig bar. 0.1 miles turn right on Catwick Lane. Alright, so here we are, we're up to Catwick Lane. It's actually Catwick, as a wife pronounce it. Well, we're almost there. 200 feet turn right on Catwick. Three times a lady. Chipses, chickens. Lots of sheep. One hundred feet arriving at end point. Here we go. A bit of a mistake. Average speed 10.0. Average power zero. Average speed 10.0, average power zero.
Well, here we go. On our way back home. Now I've had about 45 minutes break there. I did my little vlog. I had something to eat and drink. Uh, and I've chilled out. I do feel ever so chilled, to be honest. Right, I think coming either way, let's go. Now you see some cyclists, they pull out into a road without looking. And you think to yourself, well blimey, he was lucky. Well, there's the main road over there. Well, like I said in my video, if I do get the drone, that one of the, those churches that I've uh, photographed before will be featured in my videos. So I shall uh, Yeah, I'll definitely be doing videos of the, of the churches. Get some aerial footage. And combine with some uh, video. The micro pig bar. I've got to go in there one day. Feels like I've got another headwind, but to be honest, I'm doing 12 miles an hour into the wind, so of course, it does feel like I've got a headwind in a completely different direction. But it only feels like it, I'm sure it's not. I'm sure if I was to stop, I wouldn't feel anything. turn down to the subway Now these uh, deep section wheels that I've got, the 808mm plus the 25mm for the tyres, you so you're getting off for uh, almost 830mm across. Uh, they do catch the wind slightly when you first ride them. You do notice that they catch the wind, but 
but it's only when it hits the front of the wheel obviously when you go um when you're riding down a you know a country lane and you've got the hedges giving you shelter from the side wind it's only when you when the wind hits that front part of the wheel does it feel like the wheel's being dragged away then obviously as the wind hits the, the back part as well it's, uh, it tends to weaken itself out a, bit, a lot now I've been riding these now for almost two years and uh, I can say with all honesty that they are just absolutely fantastic now these wheels I purchased after I'd done two months on a fishing boat I, yeah two months on a fishing boat I did and I lost weight I lost nine and a half kilos in weight I was worked that hard I then promptly put it back on again but uh, I'm, I'm slowly losing it again the weight the weight is coming off Uh, now I've definitely got a headwind. I can feel the gusts. Let's get up this little bit of an incline. But the, uh, I'm told that these aero wheels are uh, give you an advantage, and uh, oh, I don't think they're they're wrong actually. I think it might. I'll be right. It does feel like I'm getting an advantage sometimes they say it's supposed to act like a sail and uh, help you along well I don't know about that but they do feel good I do like them Are coming. I pulled into a passing place and allowed him to pass no problem now he's gonna have to see so look at that you have to pull right over because of other vehicles thank you thank you very much thank you thank you and there's another one Yeah, so uh, my other wheels they're only something like 35 uh, millimeters deep across a 28 millimeter tire so you you're looking at 70 millimeters and uh, I really can't tell the difference when it comes to crosswinds that tends to grab them as well but Yeah, I must admit they did, they did cost a small fortune for these wheels. But it was my treat. I treated myself after spending two months on a boat and working that hard. I thought I, had to, I should really give myself a, a reward. It was hard work, I tell you now. It was uh, working 12 hours a day. With uh, 
very little breaks in between. And uh, to be honest, I was shattered at the end of it. But I can look back and say, well, yeah, I did it. I did work on a fishing boat, one of the, the, well, the largest factory fishing boat in the UK. Can't say I enjoyed it, but it was uh, something I can say I've done now. Well, they were a strange outfit. Uh, I think they were being investigated for criminal activities because they were illegally buying other countries fishing quotas and then claiming that they were fishing for them but uh, that's another story Six miles to go. Yes, yeah, so eight and a half miles to the church at Longriston, and obviously eight and a half miles back again. I don't know if I like this best style shirt. Rucksack, what do you call it? A vest rucksack. I don't like the pockets at the front, it's digging into my shoulder. So it might be uh, something to do with the straps. I might have to tighten the straps up. Yeah, there we go, I've tightened one up. And let's see if I can... Oh. That one's twisted. Oh, I've got to... oh, I can pull it a little bit tighter. That's better. I pulled the straps across my chest a bit tighter. Let's see if I'm loosening that one a bit. Yeah, I've got that one loosened. That's the shoulder straps a bit tighter, looser. Now let's see if I can pull this one tight. The top, top one. Well, pull that tight. Got be. That's better. It's not, not digging in my armpit so much. Oh, that's much better. There you go. Adjustments on the fly. Now, this is another bit of road that I can actually uh, speed up against. You won't have seen that, but I actually made on contact with that van driver just to make sure he saw me. As, uh, as some of these drivers that drive through the country Average lanes assume that Average nobody ever comes the other way. Heart rate 140. Yeah, and my heart rate's 145 at the moment, so that's quite elevated. Uh, and what I don't want is to be an accident with an elevated heart rate. push it up uh, too high. And I just swallowed a fly. Well, we must 
must be expecting rain. The cows are sat down. Lovely, absolutely lovely. I've got the cool breeze in my hair, just the two hairs that I have left, and uh, the warm sun on my skin, which is rather good. I did put a bit of sun cream on my uh, face where my skin cancer is I've got a slight incline here I must get the mountain bike out and take that for another spin. We do like we do like the mountain bike. Yes, the mountain bike was from about 1993, was, I think I bought it, maybe 92, when I was about 25. Uh, yeah, no memory of uh, the year that I bought it, I can't remember that far back. Oh yeah, someone's painting their, their box. Hi there! Should have put some undercoat on it. Maybe that is undercoat. I don't know. I'm no expert. There we go. This is downhill now. With a got a good good headwind headwind against me now. We go. It's 12 miles in now. My average power has gone up from 160 to 170. And according to my cycle computer, the temperature is 26 degrees. 26.7. Well, 
face. <laughs> he nodded. My motorized compatriot. Oh, I do like this sunshine. Absolutely glorious sunshine. Speed 10.2, average power 171, heart rate 139.
tell us why it stinks. There's a great big pile of poo at the back of one of those sheds. And I mean a pile. It's almost as tall, tall as a building. A bit of speed up there, 19 and a half miles an hour. Yeah, nice. got some nice little paddocks and there's a public footpath now I wonder where that goes
we are. Back on the way home. We're 14 miles in. So I reckon we've got 17, 17 and a bit to get home from uh, 14, so that's what, another three and a half miles, I reckon. No helmet on, just a hat. Yes, helmets. Why you should wear them. Now then, if you do bump your head, the chances of dying from a bump to the head are quite high. Well, thank you. Yeah, they're quite high, apparently, uh, according to one medical course I went on. And of course, if, um, if you have a cut to the head, the chances of dying increase uh, dramatically. Now, if you have a, you know, a proper wound and it breaks your bones. You're almost certain to die. And of course, if you have a brain exposed, then you're almost certainly gonna die. So what you do to lessen your chances of actually having a serious injury is you put a helmet on your head. Yes, it won't stop you from having a crash but it might just be the difference between life and death. And I'm not being dramatic, it really is that clear cut. Average speed 10.4, average power 173, heart rate 145. You can actually have quite a, a substantial blow to the body and survive. But the same level of impact on your head, it's a different story. And helmet manufacturers are going to great lengths now to mitigate the uh, twisting injuries, where your head twists, but your brain inside your head stays still momentarily as your head is not to one side or the other so that's why they've introduced this system called MIPS where it uh, the outside of the helmet takes the full force Lab three, 26, and, 17. and that twists without transferring the twisting torque to your skull might cost you a few pounds extra but as I found out having that 
uh, car crash. The uh, the guy that ran into me left me for dead on the road, and my helmet was actually damaged. It was all scuffed. I don't remember hitting the floor so I'm assuming that it must have knocked, uh, knocked me out for a fraction of a second so did the crash helmet save me? yes it did, it saved me from having more of an impact on my head than it would have done we're going to be on just about 17 by the time we get back 17 miles total I never remember what I got. should do I've been there a number of times right, let's slow down cars coming in foot on the floor Blimey, it's like being in the middle of lockdown again. Now, yes, that was a bit of pavement I cycled on. But there was clear access, no pedestrians, no hazard to anyone. And I could see within the distance I could stop. So there you go. And this is a nice little shortcut. Long cut. It's a long cut. Because I'm actually uh, bypassing the main road. This is the old main road. Imagine how tight it would have been down this way with a number of cars but uh, like I said it's like being in lockdown the price of petrol is putting people off driving and I must admit I've only been to the shops once since I've been home go back on the main road for just a short period short stretch of main road uh, 
and before the road's clear, I'm ducking across this side. Like I said before, this is a pavement, but very few pedestrians walk down here because there's no shops within walking distance really and as I can see quite adequately into driveways is not an issue there we go 